YouTube Live. I have a slideshow presentation that I'm doing with my live stream. So um, if you want to see the, the slideshow, go to my, um, my profile and click my YouTube page because I'm live there too. Okay. All right, so before we get started, um, and this stream is about what an introvert is. Last week we did, um, so what's an introvert part one, and this week we're doing part two. So let me see. All right, so how was y'all's week? How was y'all's week? And I want to know how many um, introverts do I have? How many introverts do I have watching the stream? If you're an introvert, put a one in the chat for me. If you're an introvert, put a one in the chat for me. OMG. Okay, so if you're just joining, this is my weekly Saturday night live stream um, for introverts, for introverted women, to be specific. I um, created a community uh, of introverted women, for introverted women, so that um, you can have some place to feel seen, you can create community. And um, if you're struggling with identity um, type things, then this is the place for you because I would love to share um, how I learned to uh, not only accept myself as an introvert, um, but accept myself, period, right? Um, and so I... I want to share that with you guys. And so um, if you're an introvert, then this is the perfect live stream for you to be watching right now. Uh, if you're not an introvert, share this stream with somebody who is. Um, if you're an introvert, I mean, if you're not an introvert and you know any introverted or shy people that uh that could benefit from watching this live stream, then share it to them for me. Share the stream for me.
And just give me a second, y'all. I'm still sharing the stream with a few people. So, all right, so let's get started. So I'm going to quickly kind of go over some of the stuff I went over last week. Oh, my tea is not hot anymore. Okay, so... All right, so we're going to quickly go over some of the stuff I went over last week. The topic of this stream is, so what's an introvert? All right, so let me just uh, quickly um, introduce myself. My name is Shalise, and I'm an identity life coach for female introverts. I created the Beauty and Authenticity to help introverted women create their authentic lives. We will primarily focus on identity building and discovery topics. Um, all right, so what's my mission then? Um, the mission of the beauty and authenticity is to help women create authentic lives by building an identity, emotional intelligence, improve their social skills, make lasting friendships, and pursue their passions. We aim to empower introverted women of all ages, cultures, and backgrounds. It is our ultimate goal and prayer that women find, their, find God's purpose for their life through this group. All right, so... What's an introvert? So an introvert is a type of temperament. And so to better understand what an introvert is, we have to kind of um, dive deeper into, into temperaments. So, but first, um, when you think of the word introvert, what comes to mind? What do you think an introvert is? Um, does somebody wanna comment in the chat? what you think an introvert is? All right, so let's define temperament. So the definition of a temperament is um, a characteristic or habitual inclination or mode of emotional response. So let's define it further. So another definition says that a temperament in psychology refers to a set of innate or inborn traits that organizes a child's approach to the world. These traits are generally regarded as biologically based, and they help to shape how individuals react to their environment and regulate their emotions and behaviors. So your temperament is more, um, you're born with your temperament. So examples of a temperament, like let's say somebody has a cautious type of a temperament, right? Um, then people with a cautious temperament may be like slower to warm up to others. Um, and they may exhibit an initial withdrawal or hesitance in new situations. So that's an example of a cautious type of temperament. And then you have um, 
an easy or flexible temperament. And so that would be like um, people with this type of easy temperament tend to adapt quickly to new situations and generally maintain a positive mood. All right, so we're gonna actually go further into the types of temperaments. Um, and so there are four types of temperaments. There is sanguine, choleric, phlegmatic, and melancholic. All right, so the first one is the sanguine temperament. And people with a sanguine temperament are usually extroverted and sociable. So uh, another way to think of the sanguine tem temperament is just to call them extroverted, like, um, or outgoing. We're more used to when, like, people say they're outgoing or, like, a social butterfly. Um, it's derived from the sanguine temperament. Okay, so the... People who, who identify more with the sanguine temperament, um, they're more likely to be found in the middle of a crowd rather than holding up the wall, right? So if you're at a party or some type of social event, the people who are the most outgoing tend to be like right in the mix of everything. Um, and so people with this temperament, um, when it comes to social interactions, it comes like very easy to them. Uh, they're often very talkative and energetic. All right, so then now we're gonna move on to the choleric temperament. This temperament, um, the person is still outgoing, but it's a little different. So choleric, People with the choleric temperament tend to be people with dominant and assertive personalities. Um, they're more associated with the, the type A personality, right? Um, so people who belong to this temperament type are goal-oriented and driven. Um, and they are like high achievers at work, school, or even play like even with um like sports or games like stuff that's supposed to just be fun they're like high achieving there too um and they're often selected as team leaders um during like you know sports or any type of games um and they typically like to prioritize achieving set goals over fostering critical social connections and relationships. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna look up an example of a type A personality like on a TV show or a movie. So let me see, type A personality TV characters. Okay, so, hmm, I'm trying to find something that's like newer. Okay, so have you, if you've ever seen um, Harry Potter, uh, Hermione Granger is an example of a type A personality. Let's see. Let's see, who else would be considered a type A? Batman would be considered a type A personality. And Jane from Bridesmaids, I don't know if you know who that is, but I believe it's the mean, the mean girl right here. <laughs> She's like a type A personality. Okay, so let me see. Let me go for movies because I feel like movies are better. Movie characters. Okay, so anyway, I just found a couple of them. So, so yeah, that's a couple um, of people who have the type A personality or the choleric temperament. 
So let's move on to the phlegmatic temperament, right? So now we're getting into the more introverted temperaments. The first two temperaments were extroverted. So they were um, sanguine and choleric. Those are extroverted temperaments. And then phlegmatic is one of the introverted temperaments. So the phlegmatic temperament um, is typically associated with the... Um, um, the laid back type of person. Um, phlegmatic people show little emotion, which can come across as passive or unfeeling during social interactions. So, um, yeah, like people, like, have you heard of people being more laid back, more chill? Um, as we go through the, as we go through the, um, the, uh, lesson, I'm gonna give examples of, the more laid back and introverted um, types of people using like TV and movie characters just to kind of give you an idea. Okay, so yeah, the phlegmatic people are laid back. They tend to show little emotion, so it can come across as passive or unfeeling during social interactions. So if you're if you feel like you're like a more laid back, chill person, like sometimes people will be like, um, "Are you all right?" Um, you okay today? Like they'll question whether you like are okay or they'll like, um, they'll like assume that you're not, who, who's trying to join the live? Huh. They'll like assume that, um, you're not listening or you're not interested or they'll assume that you're like a passive person just cause you're not talking especially if not talking as much as they talk. So they assume something's off, um, right? And then we live in like a, a more extroverted society. So, okay, I'm not, um, I'm not letting you join the live as far as getting on screen with me. I'm not doing that, no, but you're welcome to watch. Okay, so, um, people with the phlegmatic temperament, they are easygoing people who tend to be very empathetic when relating with others, and they are dependable and patient people who find comfort in the mundane and routine. So, all right, let's move on to melancholic. So this is another type of introverted personality. Um, <clears throat> so the melancholic temperament, um, people with this temperament tend to typically have a reserved personality. Um, and they're like deep thinking, they're creative, patient, loyal, and they're kind of perfect, perfectionistic uh, and analytical. And melancholic people are also thoughtful and sensitive. They can also be um, analytical and, meth and methodic, especially at work, making them valuable to any workplace. Um, and then conversely, they prefer to work alone and might not make the best team players and they get moody and anxious when things aren't going their way. Um, so these are quiet people that, um, like they may come, come across more serious. Like I kind of, so what I've gotten from this is like, so like the, for instance, the sanguine personality is an extroverted personality, right? And they're kind of like bubbly or outgoing or social butterflies, right? I feel like the introverted version of that is the phlegmatic laid back person. Like they, they are warm and easy to be around. Hi, how are you? Got first. That's right. Um. Um, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> oh, but yeah. Um, yeah, like I feel like the sanguine personality type or the social butterfly, the super outgoing, um, the introverted version of that is the phlegmatic laid back personality. And then I feel like the choleric type A outgoing um, extroverted personality is similar to the melancholic personality, meaning like 
the difference between them is just where they get their their energy, right? So, all right. So, um, let's give a little information about the extrovert, um, because getting a little bit of information about the extrovert can kind of help us um, understand that or, or rule out that rule out being an extrovert ourselves or just the comparison can help. So um, extroverts are energized by the external world, uh, such as activities, people, places, and things. So they're energy spenders and enjoy long periods of hanging out. Um, internal comp contemplation or being alone or with just one other person under, under stimulates them. So they, they're, they, they don't have um, as much fulfillment with just internal contemplation or being alone um, or with just like one other person. Like that's not a, a, that's typically not enough. Now I can't speak for every extrovert. I'm just, this is, this is the typical um, things associated with extroverts. And then extroverts may actually experience loneliness and a feeling of being drained when they are not in contact with people or the outside world. So, so when they don't have contact with people, they feel drained and they feel lonely when people are not around. Okay, so now let's do like a quick comparison. Um, so now let's do a quick comparison of introverts versus extroverts. So with introverts, they're energized by their inner world, such as ideas, impressions, and emotions. Um, and then, so that would look like, so for instance, that would look like maybe daydreaming. Like, I don't know about y'all, but like, I'm a daydreamer. Like, I can live in my head. <laughs> like, I can live in my head. Like, I can think up so much entertaining stuff to think about. And it's sufficient for me. Like, I'm pretty entertained. Now, I still need other people. But, um, yeah, I can entertain myself just by my imagination alone. Um, and then, so that's an example of, like, an introvert being being energized by their inner world. Like if you're um, a very imaginative type of person, then you can kind of just like, yeah, you'll just, you'll just be entertained. Like that's like the kid who knows how to like, maybe like the kid who just, um, they know how to play alone by themselves with their toys. And like, they'll just make up a whole story and nobody even has to be there and they'll still have a good time. That's kind of like a good example of that. And then in comparison, extroverts, uh, they're energized by the outer world and enjoy talking to people and they enjoy external activities. So um, instead of using their imaginations, maybe only um, in their minds, they might actually like uh, wanna interact with somebody else or maybe talk to somebody else about it. Um, yeah, so then the next comparison, uh, so for introverts, one comparison um, or one, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, okay, so one trait of introverts is that uh, we like to know a lot about what we experience. So that would be something like, um, that would be something like if we, if, um, if we were to go to a party or a social gathering, an introvert, since they like to, to know a lot about what they experience, um, they may only talk to one or two people at the whole party, but they may have a long, lengthy conversation with them, and it might be a conversation that they value, about a topic they value. Um, I don't know, comic books or... Uh, is the is the earth flat or round or <laughs> or um, any type of mental health stuff or or 
fiction or history, whatever, if it's something they care about and they get to talk to one or two people about it all night, an introvert would be happy about that. Like I know if I met one or two people at a, a party or a gathering and we had a really good conversation, I don't care that I didn't get to talk to necessarily everybody at the party. Um, but then on the other hand, an extrovert, on the other hand, um, okay, y'all are asking to join. So y'all asking, asking to join, um, what do y'all want to talk about? So uh, on the other hand, extroverts like to experience a lot. So if we go back to that party scenario, um, extroverts, they would like to talk to as many people as they can. So they like to experience a lot. Um, whereas the introvert likes to know a lot about what they experience. The extrovert wants to experience a lot of things. So they might, they might be more fulfilled talking to as many people as they can at a party and getting to know as many people as possible. Um, another example would be like on a vacation, an introverted person, maybe they really wanted to go to this history museum. Um, and so they go to the history museum and that's the only uh, sightseeing they do the whole trip. They, they go shopping or out to eat for the rest, but their sightseeing or their, their excursions only consisted of maybe going to a history museum. They will be very happy with the fact that they got to experience a history museum because maybe it had an impact or meant something to them. But like um, maybe for an extrovert, they, depending on the person, right? They may like, oh, I, I got to see five or six things. I went to three or four museums and um, a park. I don't know. Just the, the idea is that they prefer to experience more. Okay. So I see some people trying to join the live. It's just, what do you want to join? What specifically do you want to join and talk about? And I'm only asking because nobody, like, um, I haven't seen any of your comments. So I'm trying to figure out um, why do you want to join on screen with me? Are you interested in the topic that I'm talking about? Do you have something to contribute? Because I'm not just going to add you just because you hop in. All right. So. Ooh, what's going on? All right. So now to give some examples of um, some introverts, we're going to go over some famous introverts. So these are people that, you know, are celebrities and they're actually introverted. Okay, so we got Michael Jordan. Um, that's kind of shocking. Thanks for the likes, God first. So we got uh, Michael Jordan, Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> Clint Eastwood, Martin Lawrence. Martin Lawrence is an introvert. Um, I remember he did a interview on the Breakfast Club like a couple years ago, and um, when he got on, he was like, I think even Charlemagne was kind of like asking him, either why was he quiet or just shocked that he wasn't like super outgoing, and he was just like, yeah, I'm just more chill. I'm not really like um, social like that. And then, um, okay, so then we got Bill Gates. And one that was shocking too is Barack Obama. And it kind of makes sense because the thing is, is just because somebody is introverted doesn't mean they're shy and doesn't mean they're afraid to like um, be in the limelight. It may be that what their passion is or uh, whatever their purpose is requires limelight, even if they don't like it. So yeah, Barack Obama, Sierra, the singer, Sierra is an introvert, which I wasn't really that shocked by because I've watched some of her interviews and I can kind of tell. Um, Keanu Reeves, that's another person that he seems like kind of laid back and quiet and chill. Uh, Jessica Alba, 
and Johnny Depp. So comment and tell me um, which people on that list were you surprised to hear that they're introverts? So we have Michael Jordan, Abraham Lincoln, Clint Eastwood, Martin Lawrence, Bill Gates, Barack Obama, Sierra, Keanu Reeves, Jessica Alba, and Johnny Depp. Was anybody shocked that any of those people were introverts? Okay. All right. So then we got famous introverted movie characters. Okay. So um, you remember the movie, The Hunger Games, Katniss Everdeen from Hunger Games? She's like the main girl, the main character in the movie. She's an introvert. Um, you know, she had people that she was connected with and she was connected to, but she wasn't like a social butterfly. And then um, Sherlock Holmes, introverted. Even though he talked a lot, <laughs> he wasn't very like um, extremely, yeah, he just wasn't very um, extroverted. You can tell a lot goes on in his mind. So, um Bella Swan and Edward Cullen from the Twilight uh, movies, they are introverts, okay? Then we got Batman, Elena Gilbert from The Vampire Diaries. She's an introvert. And see, she wasn't shy. Like, she could talk to anybody, but, you know, she, she had a lot going on in the mind. Remember she journaled, she wrote in her journal, her and Stephen Salvatore, right? So they journaled a lot, which means they had a lot. They like to think deeply, um, things like that. They wrote in their journals. Uh, okay, what about Joe from that show, You, that crazy show? Like he, <laughs> he like a bad example of an introvert. Cause it's like, he crazy, but um, yeah, Joe from the show You, that's an introvert. I mean, literally we were listening to his inner monologue. Like he's a pretty quiet dude, okay? And then we got uh, Justice from the movie Poetic Justice. She was introverted and kind of quiet. Then, um, Mike from the wood. Mike from the wood. Nah, he was laid back. Like he's like the epitome of laid back. Like when you think of laid back, I think of Mike from the wood. Okay, I see y'all comments. My bad. I had to click back onto the YouTube. <laughs> I got a question for y'all on YouTube. I'm about to share my screen. Tell me if you can still see me too when I do it. Because I don't know if you can still see me. Let me know if you can still see me while I'm sharing my screen, or is it just my screen only? Okay, hold on. I'm trying to get back to my uh oh there we go. Now I figured out how to do it. Oh there we go. Okay, I know you can see me now, right? Because I can see me now. Okay, so, okay, you said Abraham Lincoln <laughs> and Mike. Okay. All right, so, dang, how can I zoom into this and make it bigger, though? Because now I can barely see it. All right. And then we got Stoney, um, Stoney and TT from Set It Off. They was introverts. And then um, Debbie from Friday. Debbie was the girl that uh, that Ice Cube was interested in on Friday. You know what? Let me try to clip this camera, um, like up here. Let's see what happens when I do that. Oh, no, that's a bad idea. Okay, we're going to leave it alone. 
but it's just so zoomed in. Okay. All right, so then how? Okay, let me go back. Okay. All right, so so let's be reminded of what the definition of an introvert is. Okay, so once again, an introvert is um, the introvert. Um, when someone is an introvert, they have a healthy capacity to tune into your inner world. Um, it's a constructive and creative quality that is found in many independent thinkers whose contributions have enriched the world. Introverts have social skills. They like people and they enjoy some types of socializing. However, party chit chat depletes their energy while giving them little in return. Introverts enjoy one-on-one -on -one conversations, but group activities can be overstimulating and drain energy. What do y'all think of that? Do you relate to that? Do you relate to um, um, the definition of an introvert? Okay, people keep trying to join the live. Um, I'm going to decline. People keep trying to join the live on TikTok, but I don't get it because you're just hopping in. You're not, you, you're just hopping into the live and trying to join. This is not that type of live stream. Okay, so, so that's the definition. Um, okay, let's see. Yes, um, I'm reading a comment from YouTube. Yes, I think that's why classroom teaching didn't work for me. Because it was a lot of people. I'm trying to back myself, back it up some. Because, yeah, um, let me see. Yeah, and I like that um, it's like letting you know that an introvert doesn't mean, like being introverted doesn't mean that you don't like other people um, or that you don't like socializing. It just means maybe you like it on a smaller scale. Three classes back to back, wow. Yeah, that's a lot. So yeah, it literally was draining. Okay. Yeah, like I know um, I had to do like a presentation with some, some new hires at work. And like when I train people at work, it's no more than three people at a time. But when I had to do this presentation, it was for the new hires for the whole um, company. So, but it wasn't a lot of people. It was like 10 people. But I definitely was like, oh, I got to get out of here after them little 10, 12 people versus three people. Because <laughs> it was a lot of, like, to me, that was a lot of people. Um, but, hey, you got to keep going. Okay. I'm trying to figure out how to uh, scroll back. Hold on. Okay, so let's talk about what an what a introvert is not. Okay, so to start, an introvert is not the same as being shy. Like before I started learning about introversion, 
I thought that it was like the same thing, especially because when I would go on social media and people would talk about a little bit about what an introvert was, um, a lot of the qualities of an introvert applied to me. So I was like, oh, yeah, like it's the same thing. Oh, you said one on one is easy. Yeah, like one on one interactions are easy, um, especially with people who like are good listeners as well. Like, I don't like one on one interactions with people who they want to do all the talking, which, um, <laughs> because then I get kind of bored. It's like I start zoning out. I'll be like ready to leave the room. But yeah, like when we can actually both talk, then it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, like being an introvert and being shy is not the same thing. Like an introvert does not mean you're shy. And like, I thought that they were the same because when I would go on social media and, um, uh, would see videos on introverts, they kind of described, um, the qualities that I had. Oh my God, my kids are screaming. I'll be back. Okay, so yeah, when I would go on social media, uh, since they never said, oh, since no, I've, I had never seen not one video on uh, TikTok that made the distinction in this, and explicitly stated that um, being introverted is not the same thing as being shy. So when they would list the qualities of an introvert, I was like, oh yeah. That sounds like me. So I didn't realize that they weren't the same thing until I started reading books on being an introvert. So, okay. All right. So shyness is actually social anxiety. Um, so it's like an extreme self-consciousness when one is around people. It may have some genetic roots. Um, but it is usually learned from experiences at school with friends and in families. For some, it comes and goes at various ages and in certain situations. Shy people may feel uncomfortable with one-on-one -on -one conversations or in group situations. So now when I was growing up, I was shy. Um, like now I'm not shy anymore. Like I'm not socially anxious anymore but like the definition said i will sometimes have like a random surge of social anxiety and i'll just like freak out <laughs> and like i'll be like uh and i'll get the sweating and stuff but um but for the most part now i'm not shy um and i'm i'm comfortable and confident socially but when i was growing up i used to be very terrified even one-on-one -on -one interactions, how the definition said, uh-uh, like, I used to be freaking out. Um, I had talked about in a different live that, um, like, one time I had read a, um, an article, an article, I think, in Cosmo Magazine, if y'all remember Cosmo Magazine, Cosmopolitan, that was um, teaching you how to be more uh, outgoing or um, more social. Um, how to show people that you're interested in in talking to them or whatever. And it said to make eye contact. So I made eye contact, but I just like made constant eye contact. Like I didn't blink or nothing. I was just like, yeah, like just talking. <laughs> and I wasn't blinking or nothing. And I was in high school at the time and I was, I knew I was shy and I was like painfully shy. And I knew it was a, a like an issue but I didn't know how to get out of it. So when I read that advice, I took it so literal. And by me being so nervous, I didn't want to make any other move. So I just made eye contact and didn't blink. And um, uh, my friend was like, are you all right? Why are you staring at me and not blinking? <laughs> so yeah, like, but I will say I learned how to make eye contact from that. Like, um, so even when I was still shy, I can look people in their eyes when I talked to them because I had kept practicing it. But that's like an example of like the social anxiety and like 
I um would sweat bad when I talk to people, um, stuff like that, but now I'm much more confident. And so really social anxiety or shyness is more of an insecurity around being around people and interacting with people. Um, it's not it's not really, uh, it's not the same as introversion because introversion is just more of like your preference. Like you, you just, your energy, you just like to, um, you know, think a lot and you're creative and you like to, you know, stuff like that. Ever uh, got so dizzy you felt like passing out? So has, has anybody ever uh, got so dizzy that you felt like passing out? Um... I haven't necessarily gotten so dizzy that I felt like passing out, but I have, well, is that true? <laughs> you know, I, I can see me doing that. Um, I definitely have like, my mind has gone blank. Like for presentations and stuff, like I had presentations, presentations in college and I forgot everything I was supposed to say. And I was sweating bullets. And you do kind of feel lightheaded, like. <laughs> what about you? So what was your situation? Ah. Like a job interview? Yeah, you know what? I'll be like, when I um when I got them jobs in my past, it must have been just it had <coughs> had to be just by the grace of God because I used to be so nervous in them job interviews, and that makes sense because like in a job interview, you like rehearse um the way you would answer certain questions before you get there, but I would forget them. Like a few years back. <laughs> so I feel you on that. Okay, let's see. What's the next slide? I haven't figured out how to make it like. I don't know, but we're going to go to the next slide. Okay. All right. So the next. Um, the next personality. Uh. Or actually, this is an actual mental disorder. Let me go back to the screen so I can make sure y'all can see me. So the schizoid, um, it's like a dis it's a disorder, and people can mistake this for introversion as well. Um, but people who have the schizoid disorder, they kind of live in a um, a painful dilemma. So they need relationships, yet they fear close involvement with other people. And in most cases, the individuals have grown up in traumatizing and or neglectful homes and have withdrawn or detached to avoid any more pain from human contact. The schizoid personality disorder is a common diagnosis in the mental health field. Yeah, you said, okay, you say you heard that the interviewer, interviewer is just as scared as we are. Well, yeah, but like, when you got social anxiety, hearing that, oh, well, you know, the person interviewing you is just as scared as you. Um, it's, you know, it's like nice to hear, but at the time that wouldn't help me with my social anxiety. I don't know about, about y'all, but that wouldn't help me. But now it makes sense now that um, I'm not like anxious anymore. So now that makes sense because it's like, yeah, if you had to interview somebody, just imagine you had to ask all these questions and seem like you know your job well and seem like you know what you're talking about. Yeah, that would be like, <laughs> that That could make you um, pretty nervous. But even if the interviewer is nervous, they could still maybe not even struggle with social anxiety. They could just be nervous about performing well as a, as, as an interviewer. Um, but when you're like socially anxious, you're like, 
worrying about what the other person is thinking of you and if you're measuring up and that's kind of why it's so terrifying like you're in fight or flight almost with with every interaction with somebody like you it's like your life depends on it <laughs> um if you ever had social anxiety or being when you're shy like yeah depending on how intense it is like i know mine was pretty intense like i, I feel like i couldn't make one false move i couldn't mess up <laughs> like i had to always be on you know okay so it's about to be nine o'clock so i am gonna stop the stream in a minute but do y'all have any questions or do you have any topics that um for the next upcoming streams that you would like to talk about as far as um it can be kind of anything um it can be like relational and stuff like that relationships um and stuff like that um especially because a lot of introverted uh people or shy even shy people that i've known they kind of struggle with relationships with other people because um people tend to assume that they they're passive and people tend to assume that they can walk all over them and they and they do and they try um so even stuff like that y'all have some suggestions for some stuff we can talk about i will make sure to um to talk about it <clears throat> because next week um I'm trying to see here how much more we have to talk about kind of the introduction to what an intro introvert is. I know we still have to talk about what a highly sensitive person is. Um, and then we have uh, a little more to talk about. Like, uh, I don't know if you've experienced this being an introvert. But I've experienced people calling me self-absorbed or stuck up um, just because I was quiet. But they they assumed that um, I had no interest in them um, or that I was too good to talk to them, right? So, and I used to get that my whole life. Um, like, and I'm like, why are you, like, what? I'm just terrified to talk. <laughs> I'm scared to talk. But um, yeah, people tend to get, people tend to um, assume that you're like just into yourself. And so we'll talk more about that next week. And the highly sensitive person or the empath, we'll talk about that as well because people kind of, I know I have mistaked introversion and highly sensitive to be the exact same thing. Um, and then, and then we will talk about um, like the way that introverts, how they like to communicate, like how some introverts don't like to talk as much and why that is and how, we make extroverts feel and how obviously um kind of shine more light on how it feels to be introverted or more quiet in a world of people that like to, like that a lot of people typically like to talk a lot more and more extroverted so getting the whole why are you so quiet thing all the time you know how an introvert can avoid being walked over Okay, let me write this down. So, how to avoid being walked over as an introvert? Okay, so I'll make that a topic. And it won't be next week's topic. It'll be maybe one or two after that, because like I said, we're going to kind of we're going to go over um, what an empath is. We're going to go over 
um, uh, introverts being called self-absorbed or stuck up. And then the way we like to talk and communicate versus how extroverts like to talk. And then um, how we make extroverts uncomfortable. Like they, like you always, do you ever hear people say, it's the quiet ones. You gotta watch the quiet ones. <laughs> How to relate to other people that you're an introvert so you don't seem rude or uninviting at times. Ah, yeah. And you know what? That's a good one. I'm about to, let me hold on. Let me write that. How to tell, how to explain to people that you're an introvert so you don't seem rude or uninviting okay so i know i've um more recently because um i've learned what like um i've more so learned what an introvert is so now i'll just start saying that like if i'm talking to people um about whatever i and if it comes up in a conversation somehow i'll just be like yeah well you know i'm introverted so i'm such and such and such and such like <laughs> like i'll just say it um because it burns your energy to um yeah like yeah I, I feel you. Like it burns your energy when people like are assuming you're rude or uninviting. So you know what? That kind of reminds me of the stuck up thing or the self absorbed thing. Like I have. Um, I don't know if you've experienced that, but people will call me stuck up or um, self absorbed because I don't talk to them like a lot. Like I'll say hello and stuff, but I haven't. Um, been super outgoing trying to talk to them. So they assume that you must be just all about yourself or you're rude. Um, or like you said, uninviting because you don't talk to them. So uh, we could definitely, we could definitely talk about that. Um, because yeah, I, I struggle with that a lot as well. Um, uh, a big part of it is not caring what they think. That's a big part of it. Um, and just making sure to uh, speak to everybody um, and put yourself out there a little more But um, and talking to people. But as far as, but that's about it because the thing is you can't really please everybody. And like a lot of people, even when it becomes so obvious, that you're kind and you're genuine, but you just don't talk a lot. They, they, that's not good enough for them. Like they're annoyed that you're not interested in them. They're offended. So some people are just like offended. Um, because like I had said last week, um, I had gave an example, like um, there's people when you're introverted, they'll assume you're passive. So they'll assume that they can walk all over you and take advantage of you. And then there's people that they'll assume you're you're uninterested or you're rude or you're stuck up or you're self-absorbed, right? And then you got people that they'll actually see you for what you are. They'll be like, oh, they just lay back, they're chill, they're cool. Um so some people, they just, a lot of people take you based on their own, their ability to, to see themselves uh, for who they are, like depending on how much self-work and how much social or emotional intelligence they have. Um, but yeah, we'll talk more about it. You said you speak to others at work, even though they may not speak back. Yeah, like, but you know what? Um, I speak to people, and when they don't speak back, if I notice a pattern of them not speaking back, I don't speak no more. <laughs> because I was I was trying to speak to them, and they'll just keep not talking. So I'll be like, oh, okay, well, I guess we don't have to talk. Like, I don't know. That's just me. I'm like, all right, cool. We don't have to talk. Because um, I don't know. That's just strange. 
<laughs> and like I speak to everybody, but um, yeah, they don't be. There's a there is a quite a few people they don't say nothing back. So I'll be like, all right. I don't know. Um, <laughs> like I don't know. I don't know if I'll get to the point where I I'll, I'll just speak to them. Uh, regardless or anyway, but it's kind of, I don't know, it's just odd because they'll make eye contact and look directly at you and they won't say nothing. So it's like, okay, I, I don't want to spend no time trying to talk to you. I can spend that time trying to talk to somebody who, you know, will say hello back. But I don't know. But all right, so... um I'm gonna end the live. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you to everybody who watched. Um, I am gonna post it as a full video on YouTube. So if you wanna see the whole stream, um, it'll be on YouTube by tomorrow. So, and next week we'll be back. Same time, Saturday at 8 p.m. Unless, let me make sure I don't have church. <laughs> yeah, I should be back next week by at eight o'clock next Saturday on the twenty third. If not, I will let you know beforehand. But all right, see y'all later.